Hi, I'm Michael Smith for Nevada Trails. I have a very special show. I have Sandy Lonay. She's back again. And i uh, tell you what, when you left last time, I bought a book from you, St. Charles Hotel. And I read it. And one, there's a remarkable history. You're a historian. Oh, thank you. Besides mm -hmm. being a ghost hunter. Mm -hmm. But she went through the history first, so I felt like I had a, a comfortable zone of what the environment was. The thank Mueller you. House and the St. Charles House. Uh, right across from, I guess, the, the legislature. The mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I kind of, you know the environment, and then you start going into things that happen to these people. Yes. And it was like riveting. Oh, <laughs> oh thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I highly recommend getting the uh, book from, uh, from Sandy on the uh, St. Charles Hotel because, one, you guys, it seems like you've been there many times to investigate it. Yes, since 2005. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then um, I like the one piece where the, uh, the person who, um, I don't know if she was the manager or been there for a long time, but she said that there was another investigative group from Reno went there, and they left without and never came back. They never came back. Yeah, and that then, was the property manager there, Linda. Property manager. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, thank you for your education. Oh well, thank you. You're welcome. I I like the praise for the book. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, when you did they call you to, or to do this, or you just say, can I come and see your? No, husband? I asked if I could write a book about that. I asked the property manager, Linda, and then I asked the uh, owners of the building itself, and they said, yeah, that'd be great. Well, it's awesome because to the very end of the book, you don't know that there was like Honky Talk Man was filmed there, parts mm -hmm, of it, and it mm -hmm. changed one of the rooms. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how the ghosts feel about that. Wasn't that Phil's room? Uh, no, that actually, that was Guy's room. Oh, Guy, yeah. Uh -huh, and he liked it. Everybody liked it to know that his room was on TV. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also said the <laughs> a movie. that um, Monk was in there, too. Hank Monk stayed there, uh-huh. And that's a, he's a relatively famous stagecoach yes, driver. Yes, he is. So yeah. he really made he made the coast mm -hmm. uh, the, the news coast to coast. Mm -hmm. So is there an actual uh, museum there for him? They took an original room because at one time in the St. Charles Hotel there was two hundred and six original rooms in there, and they're like this big. <laughs> I know. You had a cot and a desk, and that's it. You're like and a so, walk-in closet. Exactly. That's all it is. And so they believe that's the one that Hank Monk stayed in, but it's a tribute to him anyway because he was there. Well, I think that's awesome. So we have all this history, yeah. and then you kind of weave back into um, the personalities of the people that are still there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you got uh, Phil scared me. Mm -hmm. uh, said, Phil is a mean man, and he's a mean ghost. He pulled your hair? Pulls your hair, and he just growls at you, and he just does all kinds of nasty little things to people. Yeah, he has EVPs in there, which are called uh, electronic voice phenomena. Yeah. And so he will speak through that on a digital recorders or if you have a video camera moving. Well, one thing I thought was kind of funny with Phil was he said that he actually posed with you for a picture. When you said, yes, he, he told did. told him to be good, and he was good. Mm -hmm. Went then, into his room, and I said, Phil, you've got to be nice because people are coming here to see you, and there's a big orb right next to me. Well, you said right, uh, in the book you had dousing rods, mm -hmm. and you said one of the members of the group had dousing rods spinning for five minutes above his head. And yes. He had, he had them in his hand, and they were just spinning. Mm -hmm. They were spinning. <laughs> we call that dancing. And when, usually dousing rods, when you use them to communicate with the spirit, they'll cross to say yes, normally, or they'll swing back to say no. And sometimes that we have discovered that when the spirits are happy and they like want to dance with you, they just keep spinning round and around and around and around over oh, your wow. head. Oh, mm wow. -hmm. We've had that happen quite often. Well, you could actually see these spirits? Sometimes? Well, with my abilities, I can see them. What do they look like when they're coming around? They just look like they're standing there going twing, twing, oh. twing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Those, those uh, rapscallions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then you also mentioned something about uh, an EMF device, uh, electromagnetic field detection. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, the spirits have a lot of electromagnetic energies around them. And so we have this little device. It's called a ghost meter. And it's actually a gauss meter. And it will detect the electric magnetic fields that are around you. If a ghost happens to be near you, it'll start beeping and the, the meter will go up high. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you had a, you had a uh, mention of a, a young person who went with you, but when she got with you to the hotel, she mentioned that she wasn't a believer. So she yes. thought the whole thing was a fake. Mm -hmm. And then she, after about a short period of time, decided to leave the group mm -hmm. and go home. Uh huh. <laughs> yes, because the, it's very interesting. We have been in several buildings, and St. Charles, too, that if you go in there and you say, this place isn't haunted, there's no ghost, they will prove to you that, yes, we are here. And one did, and it scared her. I mean, she was terrified, and she said, I'm out of here. Well, the ones that made me nervous was one, uh, Phil. 
Phil. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had a mean ghost push me before. Mm -hmm. And the second one was the guy who blocks you in the room. Mm -hmm. That would make me unnerved. <laughs> That's a little strange. Yeah. yeah. Steve was um, a man of, uh, when he was alive, kind of simple minded, and he loved to have company. And so when you do visit his room, he'll close the door and lock you in. <laughs> well, he said that he was uh, close to the manager's daughter, and he was kind of, would follow her to keep her safe. Mm -hmm. He would keep her safe. This was a big man. He was very tall, very big, and his name was Steve. And he was, um, I guess, the protector and the guard of everybody that was there. He made sure everybody was doing okay. How would you protect uh, somebody that you really cared for that's living and you're a ghost? Well, what he does, just like what you were saying, he follows Linda's daughter around, makes sure that she's okay. Um, I'm sure that he makes lots of noises and scary noises if somebody's around her that he doesn't feel is that she's safe being around. The spirits will do all kinds of stuff to make sure that you're safe. And, and St. Charles Hotel, it's crazy. <laughs> well, I, I lived, crazy wonderful. I lived in an old ho hotel as well, and mine seemed like they always turned the water on. Like they never, can. I mm -hmm. never figured out why they. What was the water communicating that it um, that that, uh, they, that they're there or something mm -hmm. or that you're okay. Water or? is a great um, conductor, um, kind of like a conduit for spirits. Um, if you want to get really scientific, the electromagnetic fields, okay, with the spirits, they can change the meters. They live in the water. Oh wow! Mm, so water is a real. Um, well, strength, strengthening or, or strong, I should say, a conduit for the ghosts to come from wherever the realm that they are at to come into a building. That's why you have, uh, you, when you have your, your sinks, your um, drainage, your, your sewer, things like that, try and keep them covered up or close the door into a restroom because that's just a, a very easy way for them to come into a house or building. Well, that's wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this was actually the hot water. <laughs> Mm, and it was, yeah. like, it, was like, it was like an old hotel you had the, the, the sink in the room mm -hmm. in the bedroom yes and the hot water as long as it stayed on I always felt oh. bad for the landlord because the water was always running well I'm sure ghosts like more comfortable uh, feeling water than cold <laughs> they might want to take a bath in, in warm water too so well, well also in the book um, the St. Charles Hotel you had a lot of energy orbs and pictures mm -hmm. I wore my tie just to show orb off tie. my orb tie <laughs> yeah and um I actually have more my my jersey because he said that uh, our rocks choose you and this one mm -hmm. and I also have some other rocks in my my pocket. Sure. But the energy orbs are in a lot of pictures. Yes, they are. And they that's are. It's just a major, just kind of to show that they're with you and around you. Mm -hmm. I just call them their energy orbs. It's kind of like their signature. It's their just their energy orb, and they show up. There's a lot of times um, I will say, "Hey, take your picture with me," and then they'll just be like this. I don't know, aura around me full of uh, ghosts and stuff. It's fun. Well, sometimes you had reflections in um, like a, a TV of, of a, a, mm -hmm. a, fi a figure. So yes. it could be an orb with you, but also a reflection of, of something of a figure. Yes. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know what to say to that, but outside of God. And that's scary. You know, when you're taking a picture of a TV, do it in your own home. I'm sure you'll find things. Oh. But you're taking a picture and you know that it's not your reflection because if the TV's here, you're standing here, it wouldn't reflect you. And so it's kind of wonderfully creepy to, especially in the St. Charles Hotel, go in there and because each room has their own TV and all of a sudden you see these dark images standing there. It's... And then all of a sudden you take another picture and there's an orb right there too. It's like, oh, who's here? One thing I didn't understand the explanation of sometimes it was a streak of light. Is that more positive? Mm -hmm. You act like when you're writing it, it was more positive to have a streak than an orb? Or did I misread that? Well, um, I could say, yeah, it's more positive. I think that's just when they're moving. They call that a vortex energy. Okay. And I believe that's just when they're moving around the fastest. Oh, okay. That's why when you take pictures with a digital camera, we always tell people to take three, four, five pictures at the same place because in one you might have the orb and then the other four you won't have, uh, well, any orbs except just the scenery that you're taking a picture of because they move that fast. Well, that's beautiful. Well, was, we looked at uh, Hank Monk was there, uh, mm -hmm. Mark Twain had stayed no, there. Mark Twain's every bit. And uh, the, the fighting Irish Pat Duncan. Mm -hmm. So And then they had uh, Honky Tonk Man there. So I, mm -hmm. I was like riveted for the whole book. Mm -hmm. Then today you're launching the Dakehouse. Dakehouse book, uh huh. And that's coming out now, right? It's yes, I had it published in February. Mm -hmm. And it's the Victorian past and haunted present of the Dakehouse, and it's a house in Genoa. Yes, it is. I, it's the first and only Undertaker's house of Genoa, Nevada. I was just at Wally's Hot Springs, and I was spending some time in Genoa. And I, I always pay attention to these houses. I do some kind of attraction. Mm -hmm. Is that what attracted you to the house, too? 
something attracted you to this house? Yes, it did. And plus, the, she used to have, the, the owner of the house used to have Renaissance fairs, and I used to give readings there, too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I used to walk, uh, back in my younger days, walk in um, Coloma from a campground to the, uh, a bar restaurant I used to clean. And the one, they used to store the, um, the bodies in this ice house because they couldn't, the ground was too hard to bury them during the, the cold part yeah. of the year. And there was always something moving metal signs on the outside letting mm -hmm. me know they were there. Mm -hmm. They weren't scary, they just let me know they were there. Right. It was like, hey, there he goes to work. Oh. You know? <laughs> it was really kind of funny. But there's a lot of people walking around in, uh, in that area from, I don't know, maybe the gold money days. But this is a beautiful place, too. It is. And it's called Antiques Plus now. And wonderful antiques are in there, too. <laughs> so you can go there, and are you going to have a future book signing there so people can check out yes. the house and your book at the same time? Yes, on May 15th, we're going to have another book signing there. And we are also having a spirit tour there on May 10th. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope we can, can, can attend one of these things, because if the, uh, this book is as, as riveting as the uh, St. Charles House, I won't put it down. Oh, well, thank you. I read it from cover to cover, and I thought, well, you know, i just read 30 pages, and I'll, you know, I'll get it tomorrow. Uh -uh. No, no. I had to read the whole thing. <laughs> well, when you write, do you try to get people to know the character before you kind of... Because you can have pictures of the people at the end yes. of the book. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> so, Phil, I, I was already stressed about him, and then all of a sudden you show a picture of him, and you're like, that's the guy. <laughs> yeah, he's just as mean looking as his spirit is, too. <laughs> well, this is just awesome history. One, it's history. Two, it's reality. And, and three, you put it to life. So oh, thank I, you. Yeah, it's just that's a good... That's nice. I can't wait to go to the St. Charles house. Uh, oh, we'll have to have you there and, and uh, give you a ghost tour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is that something you can do? I can do that. Uh-huh. Have a ghost hunt there just with, uh, well, everybody here. Or our family and friends. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a short break, and we come back, we're going to talk more about the Dake House and more of the other exciting things that you do. Okay. Thank you. We'll be back. Thank you. On the third floor in room 210, we discovered a cranky old spirit lady that was sitting on the edge of her bed. She didn't like us being in her room, and when we left the room, she rumpled up the bedspread. We discovered that when we went back into the room to look again. It's because you were talking about her. Come along. What, room 310? 310. It's because <gasps> you were talking about her. No way! Every time you talk about her. Every time I talk about her? Oh my Every gosh. Every time mention that bedspread being messed up, she'll do it again. Isn't that incredible? Because you watched me fix it. Yes, you fixed it. And we've been gone, what, three, four minutes? And it's all messed up again. <gasps> Isn't that incredible? I want to get a <laughs> closer up picture. Your battery's dying. She doesn't like you killing your battery. I know everything is being... Wow. Isn't that cool? Well, thank you, lady. I don't know. What, oh, I just got shivers. I don't know what your name is, but thank you. Oh, she just said, now get the hell out. Okay, we will. Wow, yeah, yeah, we will. Thank you so much for showing us that you're here. Isn't that interesting, though? You can see the both where her handprints just lifted those up. I'll be darned. Oh, I got shivers. I got shivers. Mm -hmm. All right, we're leaving. We're leaving. Oh, I just felt like she pushed my shoulder back a little bit. Need one more picture of that. Thank you. I know you don't like it. Probably us, but the bed's not, or the street's not all the way off. Wow. That is interesting. Wow. Give me your camera. Which one? Give me, give me your camera. <laughs> you have to come up to me and do your camera. The lady had done it again. We were out of the room for about two minutes, and when it was looked in again, it was discovered that the bedspread was even pulled up higher in bigger mounds than the first time. Hi, we're back from break with Sandy Lanay, the, the psychic, and you are awesome. I just and we had a, an outdoor uh, fair that we went to, and uh, uh, you were just controlled the situation. And uh, our cameraman was actually out there playing and singing his songs. Yes, so he was. you gave him his first public appearance. That was awesome. Aww. And I thank you for doing that because that was just very special. He was great. 
But I was checking out your website, and one, I was looking at all the books you've done. You've done a lot of books. Mm -hmm. And you had, um, besides the, um, the one we just covered, uh, the, the, uh, the Dake House, that's a new book, uh, you had the Victorian, uh, no, that's, that's the same book, the, uh -huh. the Victorian theme of Genoa's first undertaker. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I know, it was great. <laughs> he's still there, he's so cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Then you had the uh, Sandy Psychic Stones, 50 Stones for, uh, is it Divine Nation? Uh -huh, divination. Uh -huh. And Spiritual Awareness and Healing. Uh -huh. Then you had uh, Silver Ghost. Silver Ghost, uh-huh. And then uh, you had um, St. Charles Hotel we talked about, the Ghost Hunter's Guide. Mm -hmm. And then you had uh, Thin Veil Investigations, and then Spiritual Sightings, and then all these other ones have a, a lot of small stories, I think. Spirit Sightings is a compilation of, of all kinds of people's uh, experiences with ghosts and spirits, all in one book. Mm -hmm. Well, the ones that, you know, when you're reading the St. Charles story, you have a little bit of somebody who's not a, just a, a layman or somebody who mm -hmm. spent time in the room. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't your opinion. It was somebody who, like, I guess they filled out a customer card or something mm -hmm. and just said, I'm not coming back to that room. <laughs> right. I like to have, uh, I call them personal, like personal presentations yeah. of people that have been in, well, at, at the St. Charles Hotel, and they have left comments with the owner or with the property manager saying this scared me or this happened or, you know, whatever, because it's confirmation of uh, some of the things that we've seen in a particular room. Well, yeah. I, I remember the one story on that uh, St. Charles Hotel where somebody was pacing in the hallway, and uh, he and then the pacing turned into an argument. Mm -hmm. So the guy went, opened the door and said, like, shut up, but there was nobody there. Nobody was there. And then when you did the investigation, you used that person's notes to say yes. that person would still have the same habits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you could and He didn't last long. I think he stayed there about two months, and then he moved out. It scared him just way too bad. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it, it happened three times at 4 o'clock in the morning, always at 4 o'clock in the morning. He would hear the pacing and then the arguing, open up his door, and nobody would be there. Now, is that because you have more psychic energy at night if you're a ghost to be moving around more than you do in the daytime with all our earthly energy? Yeah, stickers? because the earth is quiet then. People are sleeping. There's, you know, not that much traffic. And I heard, oh, decades ago that the best time to go ghost hunting is in between midnight and four in the morning. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's just the most quietest time of the day. The earth is quiet. You know, the birds haven't started chirping yet, and automobiles aren't driving yet. So. Well, I tell mm -hmm. you, you're just bringing back so many good haunting memories. But no. <laughs> also, also at your uh, your psychic stones, which was at uh, www sandy psychic stones to, to look at the website. Yes, is it that is. correct? Uh huh. Well, you said a little intro to yourself was blessed at birth to foresee the future. Mm -hmm. Wow, I have uh, described my own. Um, Initiative visionary method using a unique reading um, element stones. Stones, uh huh. How did you choose stones to be your way of doing it? Because didn't you see just say you had like 170 stones or something? Right now I have 117. I started mm -hmm. out with 33. I used to read tarot cards a long time ago and everybody reads them, so I was like, I had to do something different. Well, I found this book ages ago called Crystals and Fortune Telling or something like that. So I thought, okay, I'll read the book and I just did not like anything about it. And so with some of the information that this, uh, the author had in the book, I just devised my own. And um, I have 117 stones, and there's a couple of earth elements thrown in there. And I programmed each stone to mean and represent something. And so now what I do is uh, I use that actually as my living. I give intuitive readings using these stones, and the client will come up and they will choose X amount of stones for mini reading or full reading, and they lay them down in a particular uh, pattern in front of them, and then that gives me a guideline on what to tell them, okay? Um, I listen to their spirit guides, and I give them information on uh, future events, or I help them with present-day circumstances going on. Wow. Mm. That is wild. Yeah. This, this is just really silly, but I always get these little glimpses of light. I'm like, they're just talking to you. I, I saw one. Mm -hmm. Does that mean I'm being watched by one of my relatives or something? I always thought it meant that I was being watched by somebody. I think so. I, think I just they... got one. I thought, well, that's uh -huh. kind of a coincidence. I'm doing uh, talking to a psychic. Whoa. I just got one of those. It's haunted in here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And then you said, I'm a spiritual uh, sensitive. I see, sense, hear, or feel the spirits. Yes, I know. That's, you know what? That is so much fun. Um, I just call myself a spirit sensitive. 
Um, one of my abilities is that I see people that have crossed over. And so a lot of my clientele, too, they'll get an intuitive reading with the stones and or they'll come in for a uh, sensitive reading. They want to know if their husband, wife, grandparents, children, someone, a loved one that has crossed over, how they're doing. And it's really interesting because the person that they're wanting to contact, they give me what I call a key word or a key vision that they will give me a, a vision or I will hear something that my client will know who that is. For an example, I had a lady that came in and was looking for a grandmother. All of a sudden, I had this vision of a baby grand piano. And so I told her, I said, um, I know you're looking for a person, but all I'm seeing is a, a baby grand piano. Well, the woman kind of started tearing up, and she said my grandmother was a concert pianist. Oh, I thought she'd say Kimball. Yeah, oh! <laughs> So then we could. <laughs> so then we just conducted a, a communication session, and that way the woman, my client, knew that that was actually her grandmother. Awesome. Because other people want to come in too. You know, Uncle George wants to talk about his cigars or you know. Oh, well, he's so. like next. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. Like you, you have relatives, like I, like my grandpa. I think I would imagine if I think about him, I'll bring back things like uh, Old Spice. Mm -hmm. Sure. And mm -hmm. then if you were, if I was talking to you about him or whatever, you might be able to say Old Spice isn't the clue that we're really mm -hmm. in exactly. tune with them. Mm -hmm. So that's just awesome stuff. And then you, you said you've done all these, these books, but also don't you have like, um, besides tours, you have like a training session for in, people who want to become uh, Thin Veil investigators? Don't you have like a class on Sunday? Yes, actually we have a class and it's called Back to Basics okay. in Paranormal Investigations 101. <laughs> <laughs> and what that is, is um, actually it's just old school ghost hunting. So many people now think that, you know, the first time that they see a ghost hunting TV on uh, TV, they're a ghost hunter, and that's just not it. People, um, and I'm not putting anybody down, but we've just noticed a trend that the spirits are not being respected. The spirits and ghosts are actually being forgotten in ghost hunt. And so it's very important that you um, have protection, Okay, with stones or whatever, you know, that, that you would like to take with you to, to stay protected. Um, how to, to communicate with the spirits. People have forgotten how to communicate with them. And that's why you're there. Well, that's a great class. Mm -hmm. I saw it was about six hours on Sunday, so that's something mm -hmm. I'm going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're fun. <clears throat> You'll love it. We uh, have a good time. <laughs> well, it sounds great because I think a lot of it, if you can really relax your mind and take some of that fear out of your brain mm -hmm. and open up to the possibility of it being reality, you can really take some leaps forward that you probably wouldn't know you had already. Oh, you can. And hey, use your intuition and your interests. That's what's most important. You know, digital cameras and, and, and video, you know, that's all fine and well and dandy, but they didn't use digital cameras thousands of years ago. No. And there's documentation of ghost hunts. Oh, Pliny the Elder, you know, and, and Mesopotamians. We're talking thousands of years ago. They went ghost hunting too. And they use simple methods and simple means, and that's what we teach, too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that sounds like a lot of fun. And it is. So are you also, besides the Dake House, did you say, did you already have another book in the work? I have lots of books in the <laughs> work, actually. And I, right now, what I'm trying to do is uh, finish up a book of St. Mary's Hospital um, and Art Center. It's up in Virginia City. I was going to say that. That's a pretty famous place. Yes, it is. And, uh, <laughs> I used to be a St. Mary's hospice volunteer, so that kind of like struck me real, like shocked mm -hmm. me for said St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. But uh, is that owned by the state? Do they give you permission to go in this place, or is it still... Well, there you know? again, the property managers, okay, they've let us come in and investigate there, too, since 2005. Okay. And we have had events there. Uh, the Fourth Ward School, actually have to go through the Fourth Ward School to have events at the uh, St. Mary's Hospital. And so in 2009, we made an event from their parties of the year, it's called. And we had an overnight stay that had dinner and breakfast. Oh, wow. And we set up, uh, well, surveillance cameras all over. We got incredible footage of spirits walking around. Incredible. Well, isn't the, the, what did you say, the fourth ward? The fourth ward school handles all of the Isn't that like just a museum that has like a, the old... Where they had the old ink wells and stuff like that from the old days. I haven't seen the place, but I remember someone talking oh, about, sure. about uh -huh. it. It's a great museum to see. It is a great. So yeah. we're in charge of. The, now I'm starting to get the picture of the mm -hmm. whole mm -hmm. going there. So yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, they just like I said have administrative type of, of duties that, that they take care of St. Mary's. So that book's in the work. I have quite a few others too. Well, do people get uh, ask you for do to do books, or you just kind of use your uh, 
your own historic Yes, that, yeah, I've been doing an awful lot of research on different, uh, the uh, Sisters of Charity were the nurses there. So I've been doing research on them. And then what I've learned just through the years being there and listening to what the property managers have to say too. Well, I'd like mm -hmm. to collaborate on a few mm -hmm. ideas. We'll talk a little more time. Mm -hmm. We're down about a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. Could you give out your contact information so people can come and... Oh, I sure will. It's www.sandyspsychicstones. Dot com and, and it's S A N D I E S. I have to be different. <laughs> can you order the books on that? that yes, you can. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm also on Kindle. If you go on Amazon Kindle and write my name Sandy Lene, and then all my books, uh, not all of them, but uh, most of them are up on Kindle. Yeah. So, well, I saw mm -hmm. in the book it was like L A N A E uh, space. Yes, a space. Uh huh. Because I, I think we had it combined. We made a mistake in our. Well, that's okay. It's the, you'll get to it. Okay, because yeah. your projects are very good. And in your book, this is kind of cute. You had little trivia pieces that came out. Mm -hmm. I was like picking up stuff, and you had uh, another piece of history just because you really liked uh, Louise Carolyn uh, Tufley. Mm -hmm. That was a great story about her. So definitely go get the St. Charles uh, Hotel, the Wild West, and or the Wild Wild West Past. Mm -hmm. And because if you want to know history, one, this is a good person to do, and two, then you, you just elevate it to a whole new level. So, anyways, thank you for being well, on the Nevada you. Trails. I look this forward to uh, having you come back and we'll thank talk you. again. Okay. This is Michael Smith for Nevada Trails. Check out our Bert work and check out history. It's great for you.